Hey guys, George from Soundtracks here, and today we're going to go a little bit more in depth with our dynamic digital exhaust setup. Now to set this locomotive, we're going to set CV 2.503 to a value of 255 while moving at speed step 1. Now for more information on indexed CVs, please see the video that we've done in the past. So let's go ahead and get this guy moving. We're going to move forward at speed step 1, and you can see it's moving relatively slow. Now using my throttle, I'm going to program CV 32 to a value of 2, and then we're going to set CV 503 to a value of 255. Now the decoder has calibrated that baseline power consumption for the motor. And then the next step is to set CV 2.504 to a value of 255 while the locomotive is moving at about speed step 20 to 30. We're going to go ahead and do 20 at this particular location because we've only got a small test track. So first we're going to hold the locomotive still to make sure it doesn't run away on us. We're going to move our throttle to speed step 20. Now while the locomotive is running, we're going to go into program on the main, CV 2.504 to a value of 255, but before I press enter, I'm going to let the locomotive go so that it can settle into its speed and it's not fighting the resistance of my hand. Now we're going to press enter, and then we can exit and bring the locomotive to a stop. Now the decoder has calibrated CV 2.504. Now the last step is CV2.512, and what this does is this CV determines the sensitivity on how sensitive the decoder is going to be to changes on the load on the motor, so that that way it can react the way you want it to when it's running on your layout. Now CV2.512 has a value between 0 and 255, 0 is no sensitivity, and then 255 is super sensitive. So every time you encounter a rail joint or a tie or anything like that, you might hear changes. So we don't really want to go quite that drastic. For a steam locomotive, since they tend to run by themselves, I recommend starting somewhere around 60 or 65, kind of play with it, see how it does. So now that we've calibrated, let's take a listen and see how it sounds. Now we've got a little momentum in here. CV3 is set to 25 and CV4 is set to 75. So some moderate, but not a lot of momentum. We're going to go ahead and move our locomotive forward at about speed step two or three. And you can kind of hear how it's got a little bit of tone, but once we put a little resistance on the tender, you can hear how that chuff has changed intensity because it's working harder against my hand. As soon as I release, you can hear that chuff back, back down. So now let's do our same setup for the diesel. So again, we're going to follow the exact same procedure. So first, we're going to get our locomotive moving forward at speed step one. Next, we're going to program CV 32 to 2. Then we're going to program CV 503 to a value of 255 while the locomotive is moving. Now the next step, as we did with our steam, is we're going to get the locomotive moving at about speed step 20. We're going to hold it still while it gets to speed. Now we're going to program on the main CV504 to a value of 255. But before we press enter, we're going to get it moving. Press enter. Now we can exit out, stop our locomotive, and CV2.504 is now set. So the last step as we did with our steam locomotive is we're going to set CV2.512 to determine the sensitivity for the decoder on the load on the motor. Now in a diesel locomotive, they tend to run multiple units together. So we're going to set that at a much lower value to start with. And you can adjust this for your personal layout and your personal settings. So for example, on this locomotive, I'm going to start somewhere around a value of 30. So I'm going to take CV2.512 and I'm going to set it to a value of 30, and that's 3.0. So one other adjustment you may make is in CVs 2.509 and 2.510, and these are called the attack time and release time. And basically what they do is they determine how quickly or how slowly the decoder will respond to changes in the load. So for example, right now I've got these set relatively low, so it'll be a quick response. 
So I'll move him look forward at about speed step two. And you can kind of hear how quickly and instantly the decoder is responding to changes in the load. Now with a steam engine, quick responses aren't necessarily a bad thing because it's adjusting the intensity and the tone of the exhaust chuff. So we want the engineer to be responding relatively quickly. But with diesel, since they run multiple unit, we want to have a longer attack time and a longer release time. In other words, respond more slowly because what will happen is things like coupler bump or anything like that that potentially can cause a slight change, your decoders will behave more in unison together as opposed to one notching up and the other notching down due to a coupler bump. So let's set CB 2.509 and 2.510 to around 210 to 225 to get the most amount of time between responses to make sure that you get a more even tempered response out of your decoder. So now once we've adjusted the timing and everything with the DDE, let's see how this plays out. We've got two locomotives here consisted together. We're going to move them forward at about speed step three. And you can kind of hear them throttling up a little bit. And then back down. But when once we've got this tuned in, we're going to put a little resistance on here. And you kind of hear how they work together sharing the load and also keeping to make sure that they're more in time together with the notching. So now you can see how to add a little bit more realism to your railroad operations. Now for more information please visit our website at soundtracks.com and be sure to check out the steam and diesel users guide for explicit instructions on how to set up all the stuff we've talked about today. Also, if you have any questions beyond that, feel free to call our support department anytime or email us at support at soundtracks.com and we'll help you out any way we can.